Hello and welcome to this look at the uh, city, town, village, or settlement generation functionality in Worldographer. This is going to be pretty comprehensive. It might get a little long. I'm going to try to keep it brief, but still remain comprehensive. What you see in front of you is an auto-generated map that was just done a moment ago by me, just so we'd have a more interesting initial graphic in, in, for the video. But to uh, create a new map, uh, you go up here to New City Town Village Map for these types of maps. If you want a, one of the other types of maps from Battle, Battle Mat Dungeon or World Kingdom, um, you pick those options for a new, new one of those. But <clears throat> we're focused on the City Town Village Maps. So over here on the other side is the basics of, of your map, uh, how you want your hexes oriented. And for our city and town maps, as well as for our world kingdom maps, we're hex based, but you can go to the view options drawer over here and uh, configure the grid with a configure icon next to the checkbox for show grid. And you can switch it to a square grid, but behind the scenes, it's not as important for the city map because we're not really doing many things that are based on the tile type. Um, but behind the scenes, especially for the World Kingdom, we're still doing things hex-based. Uh, for our battle mats, uh, dungeons, dungeons and building interiors, for those, it's actually square-based, but you can configure it to have a hex. So this is what type of hex do you want? Do you want the columns to line up or like, like what it is right now behind you, or the rows to line up? How many hexes high and wide do you want your map to be? If you have the pro version, you can later edit that. But in the free version, once you create a map, it's, it's fixed to whatever size you pick. Hex width and height, number of pixels. And, and this uh, we arbitrarily picked a 40 pixel side to side. So height in this case is side to side. Um, that looked good to me on my computer as I was demoing. So that's the, the, the default. Um, but you're always, always able to zoom in, zoom out over here, as well as uh, pick particular numbers. If you leave the preserve aspect ratio on, then it's going to make sure that when you edit these numbers that you um, let the other one adjust appropriately. If not, then you can get things out of sync, which might be good for like an isometric style. You might want to have a different ratio than, than the default. Um, and then you can turn it back on once you get the ratio you, you want. Anyway, so for a hexagon, uh, it's about 46.18 from corner to corner. Uh, in this case, the width, um, if, you're, if you have 40 pixels from side to side. So that's all that. Over here on settlement generation, if you just want a blank map um, and you want to hand place everything, or my favorite way actually to create a map in, in Worldographer for uh, a settlement type of map is to do things step by step and we'll show you that in, in a little bit as well. But um, if uh, by using the generate menu, there's options off of the generate menu to generate just your coastline and generate just your then your river, then generate your, your main roads and so forth. That's particularly useful if you want to tweak your street network a little bit before you want the algorithm to drop down all of your buildings. Anyway, so to do that, you'd, you'd start with a blank map, and that's only going to do then your terrain, it's, or your background rather. It's not going to do all these other things. So for your background, you can pick to have terrain, which is kind of a carryover from Worldographer's wor the, the world, and king or, yeah, world Kingdom mapping functionality. We don't really recommend that, but you can use it. That would mean that these every individual hex can have its own terrain um, type or color um, texture. Um, but what we prefer nowadays is to just give the entire map one overall texture and it's seamless so it repeats throughout the, the map. Um, and that's this forest floor, but you can pick other ones. You could pick a cobblestone look to your, um, to your map and then do black roads for a more modern looking city, for example. The cobblestone looks like, it looks sidewalky from a distance. Or you can go with a flat color by clicking the color over here and then picking the color. The color picker actually is kind of cool in that you can do custom colors, including opacities. So this is more useful for if you're if you want to have um, like your city center to have a more dirty look, a dusty look than the outskirts. We can we can do a semi-transparent brownish color on top of the map, for example. Or for labels, for outlines of labels, you might want to have the outline give a little bit of a um, a semi-transparent look to it, things like that. 
Population, dense buildings, check this, and your city center buildings near the city center are going to be narrower and they're going to be tightly packed in. And then how many people do you want in your city? And this drives the number of buildings. Um, it's roughly going to be one quarter, although um, there's some additional buildings added based on population sizes where for every 400 people you might have um, a tavern, for example, and things like that, which is done off of the configure menu. You can set all that up, which we'll talk about again in a moment uh, or a little bit later in the video. Um, but there's a separate video on that, and we're actually going to be doing another video about that because some of it's changed. Um, particularly an additional dialogue that we added. Has coast. Uh, we're going to go with coastline for our initial city here. Coast, uh, begin and end. These are clock positions. So do you want to go from 8 o'clock to 12 o'clock? Okay, yeah, so that's roughly going to be on the left side, down a little bit, all the way to the top of the map. And these are rough, rough calculations. Um, if you think of the hour hand, this 8 o'clock could be anywhere from 7.30 to 8.30, and it's somewhat random, um, but... Um, but that gives you a rough, you're able to roughly place how much of a coastline do you want. And yes, you can't have an island by going from 8 o'clock to 8 o'clock, for example. Um, river. So if we want to have a river, I'm going to leave it off since we're already doing the coastline. Uh, but then there's clock positions where the river begins and ends. The main road. Uh, so these are all, all these clock positions, by the way, are randomly picked every time I open up this dialog. Um, so this is having a main road from 3 o'clock to 7 o'clock and another one from 5 o'clock to 10 o'clock. Main roads are used to drive the city center. And if you look at the one that's generated behind us, here you've got a main road from here to here and another one from there to there. And then this is roughly the city center. Um, because a lot of cities were, were created where two roads meet. And even if a, a city wasn't created where two roads meet, where it's just you know a stopover point um, uh, between two cities, where it's one, one day's travel away between two cities, um, then eventually another, you know, another road will connect because there might be a city often, you know, if, if it's east-west is the road currently, then you know, there's a city to the north. And, and they decide, hey, that city down there is um, is getting pretty big, so we're going to build into that. So eventually, a second road will will, will appear. Um, you can you can also shorten your city your your city uh, second road so that it would uh, not look like um, you've got a second large road if you wanted to avoid that. But anyway, I digress. Road two perpendicular is going to make your second road. Um, exactly perpendicular to your first road. We'll talk about that again in a moment. Um, and then windiness, you can just try this out. This is how much of a bend you get in your roads. Road texture, so we can change that texture. Like I said, you might want a blacktop road if you want a more modern city, or, or, or you might pick another texture that you that you like that with more color to it because the rocks in a region are more red, for example. Or you can also do a flat color for your roads. Has a wall? Sure, we're going to turn that on. We'll do, how many towers do we have and how far out is the radius from the city center? 15 hexes. So we'll leave that on. We'll see what we get. Street layout, random. And we'll randomly pick between these. Branching is the layout that you see behind you here. This is um, uh, branching. So you've got the two main roads and you branch out and then you might branch again. You know, So this one here has some smaller branches coming from it. So that's branching. Haphazard is kind of like branching, but looks a little bit more disorganized. There's a little bit more crisscrossing going on. Um, and that's actually the one that I like best, and we're going to pick that one. Ordered and very ordered will give you a straight uh, grid-like city. Uh, what I recommend, though, for this is this is where you want the road to perpendicular to be on, because otherwise you end up having... Um, the road, you know, if one road is not perpendicular, if one main road is not perpendicular to the other, you end up with a layout that looks uh, isometric-ish, and with the square build, top-down buildings, it's, uh, it, it kind of plays tricks in your eyes, and it looks pretty ugly, to be honest. So it works best if you've got road two perpendicular, and if your main roads are, you know, roughly north-south uh, and east-west and not going off at angles as much. So like I said, we're going to leave this as haphazard. Um, number of streets, this is how many streets are going to be in our city. You can uh, change that. We'll leave the default. Skip percentage is mostly for that ordered and very ordered layout where um, this will skip a city block. So you can kind of have a double, a, a, a streets uh, will skip and you'll, you can have a double block with, with that. 
vegetation percentages. Uh, we're not gonna actually gonna get anywhere near 20 and 5% because of collisions, but this just tries to place vegetation on your, on your map and you're able to add more as well. Um, so with that out of the way, we hit generate map and we're in the ocean up here on this corner, but it's giving us the information about what it's doing right now, generating the coast done, main roads are done, the wall is done, the streets, uh, it, it placed one extra street because probably the algorithm had some some reason that it needed to do a couple extras. Um, place buildings, uh, so you can see that it failed on a number of buildings, as, as I think I said earlier, um, maybe I didn't, uh, if, it tries to place a building several times and if it fails after you know the fifth time or tenth time depending on where in the algorithm it is it moves on to the next one vegetation so this is how much vegetation was placed and then a little note about explaining why you might not have all your buildings being placed so close let's get to a more interesting part of the city and so you can see here's our city like I said we've got these um, buildings that are kind of narrow because we're in the city center versus further out that's not driven by being in the wall or not you can see that these aren't close together that's just how many hexes away are your buildings from the city center and it's I think 12 is what determines that but I could be off by a little bit okay so let's see um, actually I like that um, well, that's a shop over there. So what I, I, I got to sell the product a little bit. Uh, one of the cool things about Worldographer and the city settlement functionality inside of here is the ability to get, uh, it generates information about every building placed on your map for you automatically. So I can go to view, add, enter, note. I can show the notes. This kind of looks ugly, so I leave it off. I know that there's a note roughly, um, placed roughly in the center of every building. So now I can click here. And I can get the details for this particular building. So this is the ivory coin. So there's a random name generator for some of these building types, not all of them, but for some of them. For regular house, you're just gonna see uh, the number of people there and, and uh, names and personality information. But for a shop, you've got a free form field where you can describe the shop and you can go into a lot of detail about the owner and so forth. But here, we give you a list of what's for sale, what the prices are and uh, staff who uh, who's working there what what their uh, names are and some personality information like I said you can go into a lot more detail about you know are they fair and honest or what are their best goods or whatever you want to do you can regenerate a particular tab by going to regenerate tab and it gives you a new list you can regenerate the whole thing by going here and saying okay regenerate the whole thing you can also reference another file so you can make a floor plan for that particular shop in Worldographer and then you can change, hit change file and you can select the file and then you, you'd be able to open it up and it would be a new tab here in Worldographer so you could get that floor plan. You could also work with any image as well, a JPEG image, GIF, a PNG, I believe. Uh, those are the three types that you can set it. And it, again, it would open that image up as a new tab in case if you've got a floor plan done um, some other way. So that's kind of cool. Actually, it's very cool, I think. Um, and that is all driven off of the configure uh, settlement data and settle and configure world name data. There is a uh, overview or a tutorial video on configure settlement data right now. Um, we're going to be adding and revising that uh, with the configure world and name data dialog, which is relatively new, I believe. I don't think that we've done a video on that yet. So look for that in the near future. Um, let's see. So I don't want to get into the details on all of this. This video would get way too long. If I go into the, uh, so we've got some layer functionality. It's not really used a whole lot in the city settlement stuff. You could do a, a political layer, for example, and put a, for your world map, have all the political information there. Um, for your uh, terrain, as I said, we, we didn't do the terrain option. Um, so there's really not much point in that here for the city settlement stuff, especially the way that we generated our map. Features though, this is um, a key part of your settlement map. Um, and the reason for that is that um, all of your buildings are features. Um, I can filter the list of features in this list by typing in, for example, Smith. And then I would see only the different Smiths that are uh, icons in the, in, the, in the tool. 
This also filters by structure, um, and there's other types of icons in here, and so you could get overwhelmed. So I suggest leaving it to structure unless you've got a reason to go for one of the other things. If you want to add more icons to the tool, you'd go up here to configure, and you can custom add custom features, which then you could select, and that'll bring up a, a, a file chooser, and you can select specific ones. But it's actually better to go to show configuration folder. This shows you your a folder that Worldographer looks at by default, and it will then um, eat up all of the icons that are placed in this folder, especially if you put them in a feature subfolder here. Um, so, you, and this is just based on your user folder. Um, so for Mac, you're going to have a different structure, but it's going to point you to a particular folder that it will look for that you would have to create. So this Worldographer folder, the tool doesn't create that on, on your computer for you. You've got to create that, and then you can create a features subfolder, and then you have structure subfolder, and there's instructions on the Worldographer website for setting that up and setting up the icons. So I encourage you to look there. As I said, I want to put make this video take over an hour if I went into all of that. In in the tool, you've got a number of built-in icons. We've got a, 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 some twenty something. Um, science fiction icons, and we've got uh, quite a few medieval icons, and then down towards the bottom of the list, there's a few modern icons. We also have icon packs of additional things. Uh, we've got 200 more medieval icons, 200 more fantasy icons, which are, are kind of more elven buildings and dwarven buildings and things that are fantasy um, that you would typically use with medieval icons, whether it's the other icon pack or the built-in ones. We've also got a science fiction pack of 200 icons, a post-apocalypse pack, um, and modern if I didn't already say it. Um, yeah, so, and then in addition to that, we also do a Patreon every month where we do 100 new icons, whether they're for city settlement stuff or if they're for um, world maps or if they're for battle maps. Uh, we do 100 more every month, and that's at patreon.com slash equal ideas. Each month we pick a different theme so that's out there as well. And if you don't get on the Patreon for that, then they're available on Drive Through RPG as well. Uh, look for Inkwell Ideas as a company, and um, you know there's a category for our icon packs. So if I want to place a new icon on the map, it's really easy. It's just you know pick one and then drop it on the map where you want it to go. Now one little thing there. I'm going to zoom in actually because actually and the art is really cool. Keith Curtis does most of our icons for us and, and he's done all of these in fact these are being updated right now we've got new new buildings that with uh, kind of more detailed roof textures is the main change but then he's also changed some other things on the outskirts of the buildings in some cases so you'll see those in an update in the near future but for the moment um, one thing i need to point out is this place freely button if that's if that checkbox is not checked then it's trying to lock a building to the center of a given hex and that's for uh, the world mapping functionality to replicate a certain type of map. Um, that, that's why that's there. But I can select it and then I can say place freely and now it's able to be moved anywhere. So we've got that. Um, let's go through these things kind of one by one for the most part. Notes are selected. This is going to pull up that notes dialog the same way that we, the same thing that we got from add view edit note. And since this is a Smith, you can see what they have available. So that's there. Um, notes of select, yeah, so we just did the notes of select to delete. We'll delete it, change z-axis. This will let me move things up or down the z-axis. So for example, I've got, um, uh, I'm overlapping that now. If for some, you know, and there's no reason for these two buildings to overlap. This is more like if you had a tree overlapping a building and you wanted to, uh, and, and, and or a building was overlapping a tree and you wanted to go the other way, then you would use this. But just for the sake of, of showing you what all of these things do, and I should point out that uh, the trees on these maps are on a different layer. So they wouldn't be, the z-axis change wouldn't really work for that. Um, they, they'd be on a different layer, which is above the features layer anyway. So if I want to move it to the bottom of everything that it's overlapping with, uh, then I go here. If I want to move it to the top of everything that it's overlapping with, I go here. Now, because I'm overlap only overlapping with one thing, um, that the, these other buttons are going to do the same thing. So if I want to go below the next thing that it's overlapping, the closest thing that it's overlapping in the z-axis list, if you will, 
I can hit that. If I want to go up one, I hit that. So that's kind of what that does. And you can imagine what the, what it would do with the other options here. Um, so with the z-axis out of the way, let me talk a moment about the hidden terrain icon. Um, this is for uh, the world maps mostly where we were replicating a particular style and hiding the terrain icon is something that it would do when, when you placed a, a city icon, for example. Place freely is um, already talked about. Override color, again, for our world maps, typically you would use this so that you could colorize all the icons for one faction red and another faction's blue or something like that. Um, fill hex bottom also to replicate a world map style where the bottom quarter of a hex would be filled in if it had a feature. Um, add ring, this is mostly for cosmic star maps for a traveler in particular, where you would add a ring around a star systems icon if it was quarantined or if there was some other special thing about that particular system. They had different color rings for different reasons. Override default scale. So this lets me um, uh, change the, the size of the icon. And right now, it's going to be fixed. Uh, you know, the proportion is fixed. Um, but that allows me to override it on the map by pulling one of these corner red icon, red circles. Or I can also um, change it here. And then scale independent. So if I check this one, now it's going to let me, whoops, Grab the wrong part of that. Um, but now I can, you know, it's not going to preserve the aspect ratio between those. So that's what that does. If I rotate, um, I can rotate it here and that lets me rotate. I can also, let me go back. Let's go back to the default size. And then I can also pull this middle. Um, uh, middle circle and that will allow me to rotate as well. Flip. Uh, I can flip vertically or horizontally. Note that you know if you rotated then a vertical flip might look like a horizontal flip in some cases um, based on the rotation that you've already got there. So you've got that tool there. GM only. Probably only useful uh, on our world maps or on our battle maps uh, in a city. There's not too many buildings that are not going to be obvious to the players. However, if there's a hidden wizard's tower or something like that, you can toggle GM only on, but you also want to go up to the view options drawer and you want to make sure that you have show GM only objects turned off. Otherwise, the players would still be able to see it. Let's see, that was GM only tags. You can also turn on and off um, different features by tags where you can give a tag a name and then on that view options drawer, there's a field to hide all the, all the objects with a particular uh, tag or show only the objects of a, a particular tag. Layer, so this puts this feature on a given layer and by default the features are going to go on to the features layer. Like I said, the trees and stuff are on a separate vegetation layer, although they are also features. Um, and then there's several other layers for other reasons. I'm not going to get into the details of layers because they're not terribly important for the city maps um, and, and they, it would make this go even longer. World, continent, kingdom. So here we've got different checkboxes for um, if you wanted to appear on the world map, continent, and kingdom map. This is again for the world maps where if you're placing every village on your on your overall map in the kingdom level, you don't want it to appear on the world level. So it's not not doesn't doesn't apply to your city maps. Label. So we can add a label to our um, to our blacksmith here. We can say, hey, this is the blacksmith. This is also how all these letter codes are done. And those letter codes are there. These, uh, this SO7 is there because we allow you to export all of that data. Um, <clears throat> export notes and information to HTML and to know which building it is that has this particular list of goods. Um, we say that S building SO7, or we might even say, you know, um, medieval inn and the inn name SO7 and uh, if it was an in, and then have all that information there. Um, and SO comes from, if you imagine the, the letter codes going across the top of the map and letter codes going across the side of the map, that kind of just narrows you down to what section of the map you're in. So this is building seven in section SO. Um, 
but anyway you can also label your buildings or you on the world maps you would label your cities uh, with the with the name of the city the distance is how far away from the center or from the default location i should say is the um is the label the position is what where is it clock position wise in relation to the label label style so this is the city style you can set it to other styles if you prefer or no preset style no preset style means that you're going to be setting all those font options for every individual label um, this way the advantage of doing it for with with a a style is that if you want to change the style you know change the label all the labels um, of a particular type on the map in one way, then you're able to do that if they're all set up as styles. Um, feature decorations uh, down here. This is also for our cosmic traveler maps where they use different symbols on the outskirts of a particular icon to denote that it's got a naval base or a repair facility or things along those lines. So, so that covers all of, uh, of that that's pretty comprehensive I'm trying to keep this relatively short as well the next big part is shapes um, and sh you know shapes are a key part of the program in that every road is a shape your background is a shape your river your water area are shapes um, and so to create new ones you would click arc or polygon or line or curve and then draw one uh, we're going to start out by selecting one and since we've got this road right here if you look closely you can see little dots there that tells me where to click uh, to select that particularly for lines those are hard to select otherwise and so you need to click close to a point otherwise you have to click on the exact pixel that is is the line not the entire width of the line so having those points visible so you know where to click is is really useful in those cases you can click within within five pixels or so of, of the point to select it. If you don't select it, um, you might see that the background ends up getting selected. And uh, then anything that you do would be editing the background by accident. So uh, selecting the point, um, making sure that you get the, the particular thing selected and making sure you get that feedback where you see that point colored, either um, this color, um, this bluish cayenne color or red for the at one endpoint or green for the other endpoint of, of a line is, is, is useful. Useful to know. Deselect allows me to unselect the one that I've selected and then I can go ahead and select the next one. Taper, line selected. This is mostly for our world maps where you might draw a river in as a line and then it will convert it into a tapered line where it's essentially a shape with a narrower end and a, th and a thicker end. And delete will delete the thing that's selected. Presets. So we've got a number of presets. These are mostly for our world maps. Um, uh, we need to probably add some presets for city roads and so forth. But if you want to, um, um, if you want to create a new city road, a good way to do that without having the preset for it is to select an existing one like we just did, and then any new road that we create will have that texture and that thickness and and the other properties of that line. In fact, we can go ahead and do that. Let's create line. So we've just selected one already. So now I can uh, create my line and so I can draw a couple points and you can see that it's got the same texture and the same, um, same width and so forth. Um, let's see. So next, uh, oh, and then these buttons here allow you to create a new preset or to change the properties of an existing preset and then delete a preset type um, so simple basic line dash line dotted line elevation will have hash marks on one side uh, elevated elevation inverted will have hash marks on the other side and a railroad looks like a crisscross type thing those are mostly for your world maps as well width of the line this is uh, the percentage of a hex color of a line so if you want your line to just have a flat color you can do that check this and then you can set the color but in our case, we've got this uh, set to cobblestone light type thing. Um, the z-axis stuff, this changes the z-axis just like what you saw a moment ago with the, um, with the features. So I'm not going to go into the details of that. 
drop shadow, inner shadow, box blur, not used a whole lot. Uh, I'm going to leave those, um, uh, again, for the sake of brevity. I'd encourage you to give them a try when you're, um, uh, when you, when you, when you want to play around a little bit and see what they do. Fill. Uh, so for a, a line, there's not really much of a point to a fill, although if we did put on the fill, you would see that it would fill from one side to the other side here, but it would be open, so there wouldn't be any border edge to it. Um, but you can set a color and you can set textures um, for a polygon in particular is what you would typically use that for, and as well as circles. Opacity, so we can give our shape an opacity, so we can give, uh, again, like I said, for your city center, maybe you want a more dusty look to the to the more used section of town, so you could um, give it, give you can put in a shape overlay of a brownish color and give it an opacity of whatever percentage, 20, 25%, whatever makes sense. Tags, so this is again related to show and hide objects with tags, and this just says that this is a road. Um, world, continent, kingdom, not used for this type of map, as I said, for the features. Layer placement, this is what layer we're putting this on. This is going on the above terrain layer. GMO, <clears throat> excuse me, take a drink here. We've been going for a little while here. Where are we at? 30 minutes? Yeah. So, layer placement uh, on gm okay so gm only um uh, again not really that useful for um, city maps but if you think of a reason for it you can and it works just like i mentioned during the um, features snap points to grid this like i like with features if i snap points to grid in fact uh let's do snap points to grid and um, let's edit one of these lines here so with the lines, we've got this edit chase reminder. This is pretty important to show you actually. Control drag will move a point. Shift click will delete one. Alt click will add a point to in between. So if I do a uh, control click or control drag rather, this now, especially since I've got that snap on, is snapping me to the one quarter, one half, uh, and, and all the way across a, a particular um, grid and up and down for a particular hex rather. So that's what that does. And, and that's just there if you want, uh, in some cases you want your, mat, your, your lines to match up with your hexes. And so if you do, then that, that works for you. If I hit uh, shift click on a point, then it's going to delete it. And if I do alt click on a point, it's gonna add one uh, in between the two nearest points to where I clicked and you got to kind of got to be careful with that Sometimes they can be placed end up the two closest points might not be the two closest points that you're thinking about So it might be out of order and then you have to just move them with the control drag uh, to do so so that's all of and and doing your um, Editing your shapes uh, your polygons works the same way where a polygon has a number of points for its border And you can click and drag those as well Um Add tile border to polygon, not really used for these types of maps, mostly for our world maps. Line cap, um, line cap changes how the ends are on the, on the line that's selected. So I can go from square to butt to rounded. And line join, this is gonna change here. So look, look at this point over here. Um, so right now miter, then bevel kind of um, reduces that a little bit. And then round gives it a rounded shape and it, it, it was kind of hard to see all that so let me if i do a control drag on this you'll see it better now miter bevel and round so with a sharper angle you can see the difference a little bit better arc options so the start angle for where you're where you're you know so if you're just doing a full filled in circle this goes from zero to 360 degrees However, if you want to have a partial circle, um, then you can go from what, what degree does your, the, is going to be the filled in area and how far does it go for the extent. And then for that additional area, for that non-filled in area, what are you going to do with it? Is it open? Does it closed off of the cord or is it rounded? So those are different options there. So that uh, that covers all of uh, of that labels. I think I'm going to I'll just briefly give you a label. So this is my test label, and so if I wanted to label my city, or if I wanted to go up, eh, label the ocean, and um, we're going to put this on 
our labels layer and there's no rotation to it label style this is a major geography feature um, and again if you don't want to you can you can leave uh, use custom style on and then you can set the font over here um, world kingdom continent checkboxes don't apply tags we've mentioned sham only we mentioned so that covers all of that um, so yeah so and then I just check the new text label and I place it and there's my test label for that's let's say uh, great ocean instead oh I gotta select it in order to change it so let me select select this one and then great ocean or you know fin shadow bay which is the name of a town that we're working on in a different project for our current Kickstarter at the moment NPC Dex Kickstarter ends in five days, I believe. Um, so we've got that. This is not Fin Shadow Bay, though. People are asking about the map for Fin Shadow Bay, and we're still working on that. Still got to worry about building out all the NPCs in that deck so that we can make sure that we have the buildings all proper and so forth. All right, uh, so that's, that's the label functionality. Um, Fog of War, there's a separate video all about Fog of War. Trace underlay allows you to place a map underneath your map and then um, position it and set the opacity. And there's a videos on that as well that go into more detail there. So that covers that. Uh, let me go back to labels. Uh, deselect. I don't want anything on. I don't want any of that on. All right. Zoom out. Yeah. So. There's our, our city map. Um, one other thing, uh, yeah, I don't like those labels on. Um, I don't think it looks pretty to have all of them on. Clutters up the map. But you can see, so you can move everything around and change everything up. So that, that covers our, our city, um, city map auto-generated. Now the rest of this is gonna be a lot faster, I hope. If I want to do a new, uh, new map in the other process, where I do a blank map, but I want the system to do everything still. I can go here. Now I can go and I can say generate a coast if I want one, and it's gonna bring up information for where that coastline begins and ends, and it will auto place it for me. I'm gonna skip that step because I'm gonna do, because we did a coastline in the other one. In this case, we didn't do a river, in the prior case rather, so we'll do a river this time go generate a river it says it's done this doesn't refresh immediately that refreshes every every so often so our river is up here and like we said it was from 12 o'clock to four o'clock so now it did refresh so you see our river generate and the river is just another shape um, so you can edit that on the shapes drawer um, and then we can go to generate main roads. So this takes those two initial main roads and we get all those same settings from that initial dialogue are here. They've already been explained. So we're gonna be quick about things. And so we got okay. And you can see that we've got, you know, bridge there. Um, and we probably have some icons in there for bridges that you can place there. But for the moment, we'll leave it like that for the sake of brevity. Then we can go and generate a wall, but we did a wall already, so let's do our streets. Generate the streets. Um, and again, I like that haphazard look to things, so we're gonna go with haphazard. So now place them all on the map for us. And and like I said, so this is this is the important thing or the, the, the advantage to doing it step by step is I can look at this map and I can see or look for weirdness. Um, so like I, I can look at these shapes and I can select and I can say, you know, this, this, this line here isn't needed. That, that extra road isn't doing anything. Same thing here. I can, I can look for this particular road and I can say, you know, that's not doing anything. Let me get rid of that. Let me look at this road. Oops, I didn't, I didn't click close enough. Let me look at this road and delete that. And so I can look for those things or I can add additional roads. I could even run that street network generator again if I wanted to. Now this I should get rid of where it doesn't display every point in this little uh, mini dialogue here. And we'll probably get that taken care of in the next release, but for the moment that's there. Um, anyway, deselect. Uh, I 
actually, let's hit the pan, oh, let's hit new line on and then refresh and then it will go away. There we go. Um, let's see. Now that I've got, you know, once I get the shapes all set up or all the roads set up the way I want rather, now I can go in and generate our buildings. And here, let's see what looks like with a population double the size. Let's go with 10,000 people. Hit, uh, oh, and let's set dense on. Now this might take a moment, uh, might take a little bit longer than the last time to run. So you can see that it's now shooting for over 2,500 people instead of the 1,300 that it did last time. And it can take longer because as you place more buildings, there's more collision. So as, as this process goes on, it's going to get a little bit slower because it's going to be finding more and more collisions um, where buildings overlap. Do, do, do. Um, I don't think I'm going to go into the details of, there we go, uh, I'm not going to go into the details of, of doing it all from scratch. I think that through the course of this video you saw how to place buildings and you can see how to place shapes as, as new uh, roads and, and um, new rivers and stuff if you want to hand place everything. Uh, that's the technique that we would use. But we're, we're, we're coming up on, we're, we're at 40 minutes here. Um, and this is near the end of the auto placement, or I mean the step-by-step -step placement process. So you can see we've, we've gotten all these buildings um, put onto the map for us. And again, if I wanted to, I could use the features and I can select them and I can move them around and so forth. And the last step would generate the vegetation. And so you can see it only placed one there because there's a lot of collisions. Um, but there's a few in, in here. And if you get further out, so you get a bunch where it's able to place more. So I think that wraps up a pretty comprehensive video of, of creating uh, city, village, town maps in Worldographer. If you have further questions, uh, drop me a note, uh, make a comment here. Although actually it's, it's better. I try to centralize everything in our support uh, email, support at inkwellideas.com. That's the best way uh, for me to kind of manage uh, messages. It's hard to look at YouTube and Facebook and, um, you know, our message board and, and, and email. So really our message board, if you think that an issue is, is useful for others to know about, um, by all means, put it on the, on the message board. Uh, inkwellideas.com has a message board or send me an email. Um, yes, if you if you put uh, messages out on other social media, I try to respond, but I may not see everything. Thank you very much. I hope the tool allows you to make some um, great looking maps. That's that's our main purpose. I mean, we're I'm a gamer and made the tool that I thought would be useful for me uh, to auto generate maps. Let me have a, a, a strong hand in controlling them and deciding where things get laid out or tweaking things along the way or tweaking things afterward um, and then generating all that data about about the, the map as well. Um, that's what we were going for. So thank you very much.